Well, we're back with you, and I want to bring in Mr. Ted Seifert of Zinger Ag Heads in Chicago to talk about the market action that we're seeing here this week. Man, oh man, Ted, we have got some wild moves, and that seems to be typical, I guess, if you talk about a weather-type market as you get into the summer. And is that really what we're dealing with? Because now today we're having a big up day in the grain. Yeah, absolutely, Marlon. It, it, this is a weather market, and it's a little early. Um, you know, we'll say a lot of times that crops are not made in June. They're not destroyed in June usually, but we are seeing some dryness. It is, it's been warm. It's been dry for, for a little while. We had one of the driest Mays on uh, record. But now, yesterday afternoon, you had the NOAA forecast, their drought prediction center or whatever, uh, really suggesting that you, you have a, a likelihood of drought developing over a big swath of the central, the eastern corn belt. And that's something that really we hadn't been sh seeing on, on that particular report before. And that really makes us question the rains that are in the forecast, whether they'll come. We, are, we were already questioning them. But now seeing Noah do that is really what kind of sparked all of the strength that we're seeing here today. Uh, we started to see it yesterday. You know, we really had very significant turn turnarounds off the lows. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here over the next few weeks. Uh, again, the real key time for rain, you know, I mean, we could use them now, but, you know, if it's not in the forecast two weeks from now, then we really have a problem. But right now, again, I think it's a little early, but either way, some short covering, it's great to see. On the other side of that, we know we have demand issues. So for the moment, we're going to put those aside. We're going to focus on weather. That's the here and now. That's the thing that's in front of us right now. Um, at some point, though, if we do get wet, some more rain back into that forecast and we are feeling a less less concern about whether this drought is developing or not, well, then we go back to thinking about demand. And if we do that, it's not going to be a very pretty picture. That brings us back to what we saw on Tuesday and even overnight Wednesday into early Wednesday morning. So question, if we can thank the forecaster for the rally in the grains, what happens if all of a sudden you get a, an 8 to 14 day forecast and they bring rain back into the forecast. Is that going to be it for the year? Yeah, I mean, exactly, right? I mean, I, I think to this point, we're going to have to wait to see if that rain actually falls. There's a lot of skepticism when we see rain in that forecast right now. Uh, so it might not be the forecast that does it. It might actually have to be the rain falling. But yes, I mean, if we're going to rally on weather, then yes, if there's a change in the weather pattern and we start to uh, get more rains, that pattern changes to a wetter, pattern it doesn't necessarily have to be cooler but a wetter pattern would really break this market because like i said then we're back to thinking about demand and, and at the moment we really don't have a whole lot of reason to be super positive on demand for for the tail end of this marketing year into next market and the thing to be especially wary of, or wary of would be if uh for example it would turn wet right before pollination time and it would get the crop through the pollination Without the uh, drought scare, that would be uh, really ominous market-wise. So uh, everybody has to really keep a sharp pencil right now and stay in close touch with their risk manager uh, like yourself. Uh, let's take a look at the market action right now. It has been trading higher here today. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at this corn market. And July corn is up a dime. We're at 604. You have the December up 11 and three quarters. We're at 533 and a half. So hanging right in there on soybeans so far today, they had some big gains early. Look at July, now 32 and a half higher at 1332 and a quarter within three cents of our high of the day. November soybeans now 26 and a half higher. Now at 1173, that's almost 30 cents off of its earlier low this morning. Well, in the wheat market, you have Chicago, uh, Chicago July now 15 higher. We're at 609 and a quarter. Still about eight cents away, though, from its earlier high, but it's uh, showing double digit gains anyway all across the board. Kansas City wheat, you have July now eight and a half higher at 7.99. Hmm, it did get up as high as 8.12 and three quarters. So it was uh, residing above $8 most of the morning. Now it dropped down below it again. Uh, we'll have to watch that. In Minneapolis on July, right now you're trading a penny higher as all at 7.81. Now we're kind of drifting lower again in the wheat. On the cotton market, July is now up 287 points at 86.35 per pound. December up 170. We'll talk more with Ted Seifert in just a moment, and we'll take a look at our livestock trade as we get toward the end of the week, right after this. 
All right, we're back with you. And let's take a look at this live cattle trade now. Our quotes are from Bar Chart and on the big board right now. Well, we have turned higher. Look at this. We have June live cattle, 95 higher. August, 75 cents higher. We're at 168.42. Well, Shazam. Tammy, that's on a high for the day. My goodness, look at that. We have October up 57 at 172.35. Only one tick from its high of the day. Over on the feeder cattle market right now, you have the August contract $1.70 lower at 237.47. Now, isn't that wild? We have them going opposite directions today. September down 185. We're at 240.37 right now. Uh, gosh, that's about a dollar off of its earlier high this morning. Meanwhile, in lean hogs, you have the June contract up 47, but all the other deferred uh, contracts are sharply lower. July down 167, we're at 81.65. August down 202 at 79.82 as it drops below 80 bucks once again. So let's go back to Ted Seifert here. Big move down in the feeder cattle trade. How much of that is related to what's going on in the feed grains over here? Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would I'd roll the hogs into that, too. But uh, with corn being sharply higher, that's got a feeders under a bit of pressure. Um, and one thing really quick about the corn market, you know, unlike the soybeans, which are, are being bull spread on a strong update where the July is quite a bit stronger than the November. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, you're talking about uh, fairly tight ending stocks for the new crop soybeans. So the market's going to try to bring as much of the old crop stocks into new crop In corn. You don't have that problem. You have an increasing balance sheet for corn for old crop. It's gone up, what, uh, seven of the last eight WASDE reports. So we don't have to hold over quite as much of that old crop corn into new crop, which is why December corn's stronger. Either way, stronger corn, putting pressure on feeder cattle, putting pressure on hogs. But look at the June live cattle. The feeders are not the leaders there. 170 uh, spot month uh, cattle. Wow. Uh, live cattle just on a tear, continues to make new highs. Again, I expect domestic demand to really remain strong throughout the summer season, grilling season, uh, unless we have a major catastrophe as far as, you know, going into a recession, recession or something like that. But it does not feel that way, at least not from the American consumer's point of view. Amazing that it can fly that high in the face of, uh, well, the fear about the Chinese economy and stuff like that. Uh, Ted, you got some great information today. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to uh, join us. And I appreciate that a lot. We'll talk with you real soon. Ted Seifert of Zener Ag Hedge.